These are the stories of true American heroes, of men and women who served in the U.S. Armed Forces, veterans now still serving their fellow Americans. Hello, I'm Jim Benson. In this Still Serving, we are honored to welcome George Weiss, a World War II Marine who helped create a Memorial Rifle Squad more than 30 years ago. Before you meet him, take a look at the Emmy Award-winning video, The Friday Squad, about George Weiss and his cohorts. It's by Minneapolis videographer Ray Avilas. For us, every day is Memorial Day. have seen change, drastic changes. Over the last 21 years, we have served over 34,000 funerals here at Fort Snelling National Cemetery. Port Porn! From Monday through Friday, we try to take care of our comrades, whether we knew them or not. Ready! We have one common link. Hey! We serve this country to the best of our ability. Hey! My name is George John Weiss, Jr. I served a tour of duty with the United States Marine Corps right at the closing days of World War II. Today, I'm serving as the squad leader for Friday here at Fort Snelling National Cemetery. My name is Kevin Burns, and I serve in the United States Marine Corps, First Marine Corps. Bill Gudenkopf, served in the United States Navy. I served in, in Korea. Served with, during the Vietnam War. Served in the Marine Corps in World War II. I was a gunner's mate, third class. Served on a submarine in base. In the U.S. Army for two years. Guadalcanal in Okinawa. North Africa, Italy, France, and Germany. We are the Friday Squad. We're not individuals. We are the Friday Squad. We are a group of people who are all veterans of each of the military services. And it is strictly a volunteer organization. Present harm! To honor the veteran who has served for his last time. We don't do it for the notoriety. We do it because we felt that it has to be done. The Memorial Rifle Squad is the oldest rifle squad of its style in the United States. We started on June the 19th of 1979 with six of us. We had two funerals. Ah! Today, we have 120 men on this rifle squad. We average 10, 12 funerals a day. Of the original six members of the rifle squad, I was the youngest, and I'm the last survivor. change of weather has a great deal to do with older people. And we feel the crunch of that here. The average age of the Memorial Rifle Squad right at this time is 77.4. The majority of us are World War II veterans. And that gives us something to think about because of the fact on a nationwide basis, World War II veterans are dying at a thousand a day. It's not a thousand a week, not a thousand a month, but a thousand a day. So it doesn't give us much time to do what we're supposed to be doing, and that's taking care of one another. Ready! We are relics of the past. Another paragraph in the history books. We are 
a dying breed. How do I hope to be remembered? Well, I've just found out that I'm going to become a great grandfather. I hope, I really hope, 20 years from now, my great grandson can come out and say, George Weiss, my great grandfather, helped start this, kept it going, right here on the Friday Squad. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what, what led to this and how this all started uh, with your rifle squad and honoring veterans at their burial ceremonies. I had a couple relatives, uncles, that we buried, a very good friend, and it just didn't seem right. And a friend of mine, he was a P-51 pilot during World War II and was credited with shooting down two German planes. and. I rode motorcycle, and we were talking about the feeling you get either on that motorcycle or in that plane, and we could only each one imagine the other. Well, he passed away, and the VFW that he belonged to at the time looked at me and said, well, get a firing squad together. You're a Marine. You're supposed to do anything. And that's exactly the way it was. So I got five other guys, went to a high school and made a donation to their musical uh, team and I got a bugler. What we did, the intent was there. The intent was there. The performance, however, left something to be desired. Now, I worked 30 years at the Ford Motor Company. Parts you put together and you snug them up and fit them right. And I made up my mind. I was going to retire in 78. And I made up my mind that I was going to try to start a rifle squad. <clears throat> All I could do was go according to the book. And you'd be surprised the variances between the services. <laughs> Not only the services, but between the veterans organizations. True. And sometimes it was like a bull moose in a china shop. You're cutting through the, the veterans organizations, trying not to offend either one of them. You look at the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Coast Guard, and you don't want to offend any of them. And it was that thin line, and we finally got it worked. We held a couple of meetings. People came. They were interested. We trained a little bit, borrowed the rifles from the American Legion, and the uh, cemetery finishes, furnished us with ammunition, and we took off. That's first day, we'd done three funerals. And the first day? On the first day. Wow. That was June 19, 1979. And I said, OK, we got Tuesday. That was what we'd voted on, <clears throat> the most convenient day. So I said, well, I'm going to start Friday without interfering with the actions from Tuesday. And that's the way we built up all five days, getting it concreted in, set in, that it wouldn't interfere with the operation. Uh, I went out there for a couple of months, three, sometimes four times a week. We know what's happening. People are dying, and we're trying to give them the proper send-off. And it's the final military mm, tradition. And, precisely, right. and we do it sometimes better than the military, and that really tickles my rib. <laughs> I mean, to tell you, but <clears throat> we have had funerals out there of 150, 200 cars, and on the other end of the scale, we've had just one car, mm -hmm. and sometimes nobody. But it's not the point. We do our program, no, no more, no less. We've done 56,413 as of last Friday. That's incredible, just and incredible. There's been <clears throat> any funeral that was scheduled, we done. The weather didn't stop us. Mm -hmm. Our average for Fridays is 14 funerals. 14 funerals on a Friday? On the per, average. Per day? Yeah. Oh, my. That's, oh. An incredible, uh, uh, that's an incredible schedule to keep up. We operate only on donations. And if it wasn't for the military order of the Purple Heart, Chapter 5 of St. Paul, the first year in October, they gave me $3,000 to buy heavy jackets and parkas. I don't think we would have made it through the winter 
if it wasn't for that assistance. Now you started with six, you said, uh, but I know you got up to 130 members in the group. Approximately 130 yeah. members. Was there a special point in your recruiting when that kind of took off on you and suddenly you had plenty of guys to work with and schedule? No. No, it was just slow and gradual? Slow and gradual. But what was nice about it is when I recruited people, I'd tell them, now I didn't recruit everybody, but I recruited a lot of them. I'd look at them and say, if you want something to do, come out with us. Pick out a day that's convenient that you can serve uh, serve time out there. If you don't like it, go to another day. Get on the bus, ride along, and each squad has got its own personality. Right. And I'm exceptionally lucky. I have 26 men on the Friday squad, so if I have a absenteeism every now and then, I have it covered. You've got a pretty good uh, bench to draw from, yep. right? And do you have uh, different generations of service members now who have volunteered? I mean, not just World War II, but uh, Vietnam. Are those folks coming in to help uh, fill the ranks? Us World War II veterans are not a minority. We have a lot of Korean veterans, and we got a couple Desert Storm. Do you have a scheduled training and practice when you uh, uh, bring on new people? Usually, we have seven rifles, sometimes eight. If the occasion arises, 10 or 12. It all depends on the manpower we have. Not interfering with the, the history of, of the service, but <clears throat> I'll take a new man and put him on the flags. Now we put flags out in front of us, two chrome rifles, the American flag, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Coast Guard, and Air Force. They'll start there. And then if we have a break, we'll, uh, I have a very good person that went to cadre school in the Army, and he takes them aside teaches them and it's on the job training and it, it's worked out real good. George J. Weiss, Jr. The United States honors George J. Weiss, Jr. for his extraordinary service to our nation's veterans and their families. Well, the Presidential Citizens Medal is the second highest uh, award given to any citizen in the country, so congratulations, that's a marvelous uh, accomplishment. George, tell me a little bit about your visit to the White House today. That had to be pretty special. Fabulous. I can't think of a better word to explain. It's better than winning the lottery. I had never in my life even fantasized about something like that. Doing the job that I'm doing, I like doing it. And I have 130 other people that feel the same way. And when this deal with the White House came, I got a phone call and some woman is telling me about this letter that had been sent and that I was going to be invited to the White House. Then she asked my social security number and I don't give my social security number over the phone and then she sent me a letter and that was about two and a half, three months ago and it just kept building. And I was fortunate enough because alphabetically being the last person, we were lined up to go in, and as we were lined up there, the president came in, and I was the first one he seen. Okay. And he noticed my Marine Corps emblem, and I told him, well, three years in the Corps, and thank you, and I'll back. And then what really astonished me was the fact that he picked out three people that were giving the, getting the awards, and I happened to be one of those th three people. Uh, to quote George Weiss, to quote uh, George Weiss, who's being honored here today, we don't do it for the notoriety. We do it because we felt it has to be done. That surprised me more than anything. That's terrific. And <clears throat> then I realized, you know, these people aren't playing. And it was really fantastic. That's the only word I can use. Well, George Weiss, congratulations on your Presidential Citizens Medal. We thank you for your service and for that to all those veterans in the cemetery. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure to have you here.